The goal of this video is to just show you a couple of different methods of how I get soft bodies from Cinema 4D to Unreal Engine 5. I'll tell you the pros and cons of each one, how poly count affects the file size, import times, how to apply the material, how to actually get the animation playing in your viewport, as well as how to get a more efficient or effective workflow in a camera shot level sequence sort of pipeline. And then you can hopefully decide which workflow works best for you cause they both have their advantages and disadvantages. So let's start out in cinema. This method will be the alembic workflow. So a super basic scene setup. I've just got a sphere with 256 segments. I have the type set to hexahedron. By default, yours will be on standard, which will mean all your topology will kind of uh, merge to this point at the top. Usually for any kind of simulations, you want even topology uh, so that there's minimal pinching so that's why I've set mine to hexahedron and then for my colliders I've just got these triangles uh, connected as one spline and then I chucked it in a sweep and then in the sweep I have added a collider tag a collider tag and then for my sphere I've just used a balloon tag if you want to look at my settings, I have an overpressure of five for 150 frames. And these are my surface settings. And for my simulation scene settings, I've got zero gravity. And then for the simulations, quite a few sub steps, just cause some of the collisions can get a bit weird with these thin pipey objects. So I did turn them up a bit. Um, and step one is we want to cache the scene first. Actually, before we, before we cache the scene, we do actually want our object to have UVs because when we import it into Cinema, I mean into Unreal Engine 5, we want the materials to tile correctly. So I know it's a little destructive, but once you are happy with your uh, primitive object settings, I would actually recommend selecting it, press C to make it editable. Now you'll get this UV tag, which will mean we have UVs on our object. So if I just go back to startup, now we can cache the scene. Once the scene has finished caching, you'll see my timeline goes for 300 frames, which is 10 seconds at 30 FPS. And I kind of just have this sphere balloon up, collide with the objects, and then we start again. So pretty basic simulation. And for the Alembic workflow, I kind of like to do two exports, uh, a base mesh export, which is just with this guy, and then we'll subdivide it and then do an export, export of that as well so that we can compare the two options and I'll show you in Unreal. So for exporting, we just want to select our object, go to file, export selected objects as Alembic. Uh, I usually just leave these settings on default, hit OK. And then I'm gonna call it balloon two L's <laughs> base mesh. And just for ease of naming conventions, I'll add ABC for Alembic balloon base mesh and then save that out. This should be super quick as you can see. And just out of curiosity, that is 766 megabytes. And now we'll do the subdivided version. So what we can do is select our uh, soft body hit shift C and type in subdivision surface and then hold alt and press enter. That'll make it a parent, but you can't actually export this subdivision surface because for some reason, Alembics won't recognize these two things as one object or as a merged object. So what we actually have to do is select our subdivision surface, hold shift C and then type in connect and then Alt and enter. Shout out Steven HKA. That dude is the one who <laughs> I learned from one of his tutorials about this technique. So super useful. Um, so yeah, once you have a connect, a sub D and a balloon, I'm going to leave my subdivision on two and then just select your connect object. Do the exact same thing. File export selected Alembic hit OK. And then I'm going to call this instead of base mesh, I will call it sub D and then save. This one might take a while by the way. All right, so now that that is finally done, 
that'll be a huge file, 12.3 gigs, which I'll do a comparison later on the visuals of it. But that's pretty much it for the Alembic workflow with Cinema. Now let's jump into Unreal. So now I'm in Unreal, I've just got a blank level and I am in UE5.2.1. Uh, and I've just got a post-process volume that is set to infinite extent. And really all I've done is just set the exposure to like turned off auto exposure essentially and got a bit of bloom and lens flare, but that's about it. So once you're in this level, uh, I've just made a folder called L underscore tutorial and then wherever you choose to import it, just hit import, then go to your folder. I'm going to first import the base mesh because it'll be a lot quicker. And once you have this window pop up, this is very important. You'll see this is that object we exported, balloon. Uh, and then the number of frames, we want to change the import type from static mesh to geometry cache. And we also want to scroll down and change the conversion preset from Maya to 3ds max. And this will mean our object is the correct way or is rotated the correct way. And then we just hit import while that's importing. Actually, we should also <laughs> export our collision objects. So. I'm just going to uh, select these guys here or actually what I'll do is I'll just do a quick connect objects, turn these guys off, turn off or delete all our material objects. So now that we have our collision frames, that's a bit miss, that's a weird name, uh, co collision geo. And then we'll do file, export selected objects as FBX. And we can just leave it on default. And then I'll just call it FBX underscore collision geo. And because they all have the same relative coordinates, we can snap them into place. Let's go back to Unreal. This is now finished importing, which is great. Let's also import our collision geo. So just select your FBX. We can leave all of these the same and then hit import. Okay, so now I'll just drag in my collision geo. By the way, I'm on unlit mode because if I go to lit mode, I have no lights in the scene, so I can't see anything. So if I go to unlit, or you can also press Alt 3 and Alt 4 to toggle between the two. Really useful shortcuts here, by the way. Uh, anyway, we will select our collision geo and I'm just gonna zero it out by clicking that arrow. So that'll take it to the center and then we will get our balloon uh, geometry, the soft body, drag that into the scene, also zero it out and now they'll both be in the correct coordinates. I'm just gonna move my post process out to the side. Now, obviously you don't really see anything happening what you need to do is, I'm just gonna to go to my sequencer folder, create a new folder, tutorial. And then in here, I'll create a new cinematic level sequence and I'll call it L underscore tutorial underscore anim. So this sequence will have all of our animated objects in it. So just double click that to open select your Alembic file that we imported and just drag that into the timeline. The first thing I wanna do is actually make sure our timeline is the correct length. So we want it to be 300 frames, it's already at 30 FPS. What I like to do actually is just type in 300 here. And then while you're in, while you're selected in here, if you just hit the right bracket, which is like under the plus sign, that'll set your out point to wherever the cursor is. So if I'm here and if I do the left bracket, that'll go inside. So I'm just gonna undo that. And now if we make sure our cursor is at the start of the timeline, now we just go to our ABC balloon base mesh and make sure you select geometry cache, which is the top one here, not geometry cache component, just the geometry cache import that in and now if we hit play you'll see whoa we've got our soft body working 
And the great thing about geometry caches is if I go to the start and then right click our geometry cache, go to properties, we can also change the play rate to be 0.5 and that'll actually, um, that will extend our simulation or slow it down by 50%, but you won't get any frame stuttering because the topology stays consistent. It can actually like blend or tween the frames in whatever tech they're doing in the background. Uh, that'll work correctly. And let me just quickly apply some materials to this guy. So I'm just gonna go to lit mode, which is alt for, actually no, I'll go to unlit, go to my materials. I think I have, white gloss 2 I'm gonna put on it which is just this metallic material just you can just drag a material onto the object as well it's the exact same thing and then on my collision geo let me go to my grayscale materials by the way I will be making an, a making a tutorial on my grayscale gorilla assets workflow I've made a few instances here let me drag the orange one on and then let me hit Alt-4, obviously still no lights. So let's drag a light in. Boom, there we go. So maybe if I just rotate it around this way, drag it up, angle it a little bit, and then make it much bigger. And then I'll just drag, hold Alt, drag it, rotate it this way. Cool, and now we've got this guy. And if we hit play, we now in real time have our, with by the way, I have a little normal map in my material and you can see it's tiling correctly and not stretching because we made our object editable. So now we've got our object in real time playing with lighting and reflections. And it actually looks quite decent if I do say so myself. So that is pretty much the Alembic workflow. Let me now show you the subdivided version and we can compare the pair. So this is another level I had where I've imported a bunch of tests and we're about to jump into the Cineware workflow. But as you can see here, if I go to... You can see that the subdivision version 12.3 gigs the ua asset which is the unreal engine asset once you import it 2.3 gigs so a total of like 14.6 versus the non-subdivided version it's pretty much like 900 and something 920 megs around 130 you don't really notice a difference with something this simple and if i hit alt 2 that goes to wireframe mode and you'll see it's you don't really notice it. However, I would do this subdivided version, which by the way, takes a lot longer to import and export. I still would do the subdivided version if I had like wrinkles or stitching lines or anything like that. Actually, let me know if you want a video on that. Maybe like a pillow or a sofa type of vibe. This would actually be a really good use case to use a subdivided mesh, but not really that different. So I would just use the base mesh here and you can see the poly count difference, almost like 17, it's like the, si the file size is like 17 times bigger. Poly count also crazy. And you don't really notice a different, like I don't, I can't really see the polys here. Maybe like when, if I hide this, here you can see the polys very clearly where it's colliding with the geometry. Whereas here, if I hide this guy, you can see way smoother. So if you do want these collision areas to be visible, then obviously the high poly version is better and you can kind of still see a little bit of uneven polygon happening here and you'd have to subdivide it more. But um, overall, I would say Definitely for this use case at least, uh, the non-subdivided mesh is the way to go. Anyway, that's enough waffling. Let's jump into the Cineware workflow. Now I'm back in Cinema, let's do the Cineware method. 
first things first everything's the same by the way everything's still cached blah 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 I'm gonna go to control D to bring up the project settings go to Cineware and make sure you have save polygon cache and animation cache checked on the material cache only matters if you are doing some materials in this which I am not so we don't need to worry about that the next thing we need to do I'm gonna drag this out of my connect object for now the next thing we need to do is Open up your dope sheet and drag your soft body cached thingy object into the dope sheet so that it's in the timeline. And then with that selected, we're just going to click this bake icon, bake objects, deselect position, rotation, animated parameters and select PLA. Shout out Winbush for originally teaching this technique way back in the day. Uh, so bake objects, PLA and then hit OK. What this does is if I hit H, that'll keyframe, make, it'll make a copy of that object and then add a keyframe for every position. So the good thing about this is you have the exact same simulation all in keyframes with this guy right here. So what we could do now is we just got to leave the these little traffic light thingies as long as they are both red they should not get exported with the Cinemaware workflow. But if you're really unsure, you can just save a new file and then delete these guys. Uh, so now what we're left with is our collision geo, which honestly we also don't need because we've already exported that out. And now we've got this guy, which you can still chuck in a subdivision surface, by the way. So what I'll do is I will first, what should I do? I will also, sorry, for this method, you don't need a connect object. Cineware will recognize subdivision surface operators and then bake it down automatically for you. So that's also a plus. So again, just double check the Cineware settings, polygon cache, animation cache, that's all good. You know what, I'm gonna leave the collision geo on and I'll just do a file, save project for Cineware and then I'll call it Cine for Cineware underscore balloon base mesh because, oh no, sub D mesh because I'm subdividing it. And then hit save. That shouldn't take too long. Okay, so when that's done, I'm just gonna quickly check file size, 367 megabytes, not bad at all. Um, especially because this is the subdivided version as well. So that's definitely a positive of this workflow. It takes up less hard disk space. So now I'm gonna open up Unreal and import this into my level. All right, so I'm back in my tutorial level. First things first, you wanna make sure in your plugins that you have Cineware by Maxon enabled. I'm using this version, which works with Cinema 40 2023.2. I'm still on this version because 2024 is a little bit buggy. So make sure you have the correct, uh, I mean, sorry, Cineware plugin installed uh, that matches your Cinema 4D version. And once that's done, you'll need to restart your Unreal project. And then after that's enabled, you'll get this Datasmith file import. And let me just make sure I'm in the correct folder, L tutorial, Datasmith file import and then just select your Cineware file. And once you hit open, oh, you can choose your folder here, L tutorial. Now this stuff is definitely important. So what you wanna do is make sure you have geometry, cameras, animations. If you do have cameras, definitely bring those in. Um, static mesh options are fine. Yes, you definitely wanna make sure you have import geometry caches selected. And then I like to do individual level sequences. So remember the sequence thing we did for the Alembic workflow, the Cineware workflow will do that for you automatically, which is definitely a plus. So just hit import and then we should get another window popping up soon. Give it a sec. Yep, so once this 
window pops up. This is the geometry cache selection window. We just want to make sure we have a subdivision surface selected because that is our simulation object. We don't need it for the collision geo because it is static. So once that is done, you just have to hit OK. Now, this is definitely the big downside of this workflow is that the import process takes forever. So you definitely get lower file size and I guess a slightly less destructive workflow, but the import time takes so long, even for this uh, subdivided version and non-subdivided version I've noticed. So you'll see here processing frame one out of 300 and it goes through this quite slowly. So this is where I advise, I don't know, go outside or something. I'll be back. All right, so now I'm back. That literally took almost 40 minutes to import, which is just crazy timing. I think way too long for this workflow, although you get a bunch of other positives with file size and you know non-destructive workflow, blah, blah, blah. But I don't know if it's worth it. So anyway, it should pop into your scene at the right spot. I'm just gonna move my Alembic stuff out of the way. And I'll actually just place my Alembic in a actor collision. I gotta make it movable. Do this. Okay, cool. So that's kind of like a, think of these empty actors as like a null in cinema. But yes, this is the import. You'll get a folder structure like this. And if you go to animations, subdivision surface, cause that is the geometry cache object, you'll notice it'll have the geometry cache set up. Geometry cache setup. That's a tough one to say. And it'll play like in the Cinema 4D viewport. And let's just apply the same materials to this thing. And we'll make this one like a yellow green kind of vibe. And you can see here that it's pretty much the exact same thing, just takes way longer to import, but you still have the same controls with play rate and things like that. So if you go, you know, drag this out, you know, it'll still play all the way out to here and just go a bit slower. So those are the main two methods. And let me just show you the comparisons. So these are pretty much the different comparisons uh, or tests that I did. I actually had a fourth one where this was the Cineware was the non subdivision version. Uh, so it had the exact same poly count as this. However, the import times pretty much took the same amount, uh, which again, not the best thing in the world. So if I just play through, um, the reason these look a bit different is because I was also doing some testing on how uh, updating and re-importing the mesh works. So say for example, you bring it into here and you actually notice there's some glitches or you wanna change the simulation in some way. You just go back into cinema, do a re-sim and export it out again. And what you gotta do is navigate to your Alembic or whatever file it is, and then just right click re-import. I typically re-import with new file so that I keep a history and version of all the Alembics I've exported. But essentially, uh, you'll see here on the left, this is the Alembic export uh, with the subdivision 12.3 gigs. Uh, and then the Unreal Asset 2.3 gigs, so quite big. And then the Alembic export with no subdivisions, 766 megs, 168 megs, pretty small, but obviously for more complex simulations, you might want the subdivision. So you got to keep that in mind. And then for Cineware, pretty good 367.c4d uh, file, which is what the Cineware file format exports. And then the UA Asset file was two gigs. so also smaller UA asset file compared to the Alembic one. So Cineware really good for file size management, but just the speed of importing uh, is not great. And then also with re-importing the mesh, so if you wanna update it, you gotta wait that entire uh, import time again. But then also when you import it, you lose the material. So it comes back in, it comes back in like this where you got to reassign it. So if you've got, you know, a bunch of different 
geometry caches that you're importing with all materials assigned to it and you got to reassign them again i think that's just like a bit of a hassle and annoyance so one more thing I forgot to add is you need to keep in mind that for the Cineware export, you need to bake in the keyframes to the object anyway, which is a pretty destructive workflow. And then with certain simulations, if you have changing poly counts and topologies and all that, baking the keyframes doesn't always work. So that's another limitation of the Cineware workflow. I almost feel like just doing a bunch of Alembics kind of is the way to go, but there are definitely specific use cases. So anyway, back to the video. If they had that issue fixed, I think I would definitely lean towards the Cineware workflow if I knew I wasn't gonna be updating the model a lot, but what I would recommend is actually just doing non-subdivided exports in Alembics, because you can just re-import them quite quickly. And then once you're happy with it, do a Cineware or Actually, yeah, you could do a Cineware or a Lembic subdivision import. Uh, I like the Cineware just because less uh, file size. So I'd probably test with low poly Alembic and then do a high poly Cineware export by the end. And one last thing that I want to show you guys is how I set it up in my sequencer. So for my sequencer setup, what I would do is create a new level sequence like we did earlier, and I'll call it LS soft body anim. So this will be my animation sequence. Open that up, make sure it is, actually since I'll slow it down, I'll make it 600 frames because I'll slow it down by 50%. I'll select this guy, drag it in, add my geometry cache, gotta make sure I, I'm at the start of my timeline when I do that. Right click, play rate to 0.5, so that'll make it 600 frames. Boom. So now we have this guy doing an import. And you can see with my, um, I, when I did a re-import, I just made it expand more. And I also made the surface in my cinema, in my balloon surface properties, a lot more stretchier and have a bit more elasticity to it. So that's why it kind of expands a lot more. Uh, when it pushes through the collisions. So anyway, enough waffling, I keep doing that. Once you have your anim set up in a sequence for your camera shots and things, this is what I would recommend. Right click, cinematics level sequence, and then I'll call it LS, whatever my level is called, so testing. And then I already have shot one, two, and three on my screen. I don't know why I'm pointing at my monitor. I already have a shot one, two, and three that you can see, so I'll just call this shot four open this guy up and again make this 600 frames and what I will do is track add a track and call it subsequence track in this guy I'm going to search for anim and I called it L soft body anim ls soft body anim which I just made oh, I got to make sure I'm at the start of your timeline when you import it in otherwise you got to drag it in in place and now I have I am referencing that anim sub uh, subsequence in this one. So that means whenever we make a new camera shot, we don't have to reapply the geometry cache every time. And then what I'll do is create a camera in here that I am now piloting. And let me hide the text for now. Viz, turn it off. And let me make it you know, for Instagram, cropped aspect ratio 4.5. And now what I can do is, you know, animate my camera how I want to animate it. So set a keyframe here, come out, set a keyframe there, boom. Make sure I'm uh, correctly focused on my object, which is around there yeah around there I would say and now if I drag this out to 600 frames you can have as many animations you want with your alembic 
uh, animation referenced in the track. Not the best shot in the world, but definitely something you can play with and you get the idea. And once you have that set up, really easy to set up multiple. So now you have an S4, you just hit Control D and that'll make a shot five, auto rename it. And now you've got a different camera that you can play with. So I'll just delete those keyframes, go to this guy. Maybe you have a shot like this or something, set a new keyframe and now you can um, play with this shot. So really easy to set up multiple shots. And then in your animation shot, you can actually add as many um, geometry cages as you want. So I'll add in this guy too. Go to the beginning, geometry cache, 0.5. And then I'll add this guy, geometry cache, 0.5. And then I'll save, save selected. And now when I go back to my parent sequence, all of them play at the same time because they are referencing the one animation track. So hopefully this was super helpful. I learned these techniques from people that are way more talented than me. So I just wanted to spread the knowledge essentially.